There's breaking and rather ominous news tonight on the Russian threat to Ukraine. According to a new Ukrainian security assessment, Russia has now boosted troop numbers near the border to 120,000. Also tonight, we learn that President Biden will speak tomorrow with Ukraine's president and Eastern European NATO allies. That on top of news that uh, the U.S. Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley spoke today by phone with his Polish and French counterparts. Earlier today, uh, President uh, Biden ruled out a direct U.S. military response if Russia invades, while explicitly th those threatening to hammer Russia's economy. Watch this. We have a moral obligation and a legal obligation to our NATO allies. If they were to attack under Article 5, it's a sacred obligation. That obligation does not extend to NATO, I mean to Ukraine. If, in fact, he invades Ukraine, there will be severe consequences. Severe consequences. Economic consequences like none he's ever seen or ever had been seen. Ukraine, as uh, you might know, is not a NATO member. Uh, that said, the Pentagon confirmed today that the final elements of an American military assistance package should be in Ukraine by week's end. All this coming exactly 30 years to the day since the leaders of Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, they all signed the agreement to solving the old Soviet Union. I was in Moscow and witnessed uh, that uh, historic moment. The question tonight, how to handle a Russian president who seems to rue that day. Joining us now, Fiona Hill. She served during the last administration as the National Security Council Senior Director for European and Russian Affairs, uh, but she is perhaps best known for her testimony during the first Trump impeachment on his efforts to storm arm, storm arm Ukraine's president into helping him win re-election. Fiona Hill is also the author, by the way, of a very important book, There Is Nothing For You Here, Finding Opportunity in the 21st Century. Fiona, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you hear President Biden's vow to unleash what he says would be unprecedented sanctions, economic sanctions, diplomatic sanctions against Putin's government if Russia invades Ukraine. Is that going to be enough to deter Putin in your view, because you also heard the president rule out, at least for now, direct U.S. military action. Well, it really, Wolf, depends on how this is structured. It certainly won't be enough if it's just the United States taking action. So I think what's significant here is all of the talk that we've heard be uh, between uh, the president and other European leaders. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, there are talks underway with some of the Eastern European NATO allies, including Poland, which obviously uh, are going to be incredibly concerned about what's happening. Ukraine is right next door to Poland. And the Poles have uh, been extraordinarily concerned of, uh, recently about developments in Belarus, right next door there as well. But President Biden has also been talking to the leaders of the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and uh, also Italy. Uh, that's in the format of the so-called quint, the five kind of key uh, countries of European allies in the United States. And if we have collective action on this range of issues that President Biden is sketching out there, then that might be sufficient at least to push Russia in the direction of uh, where we're headed at the moment, of a diplomatic uh, approach to this. Clearly, President uh, Biden's been very direct uh, in not raising expectations of uh, any kind of U.S military uh, assistance here to Ukraine and beyond what we're already providing in terms of uh, material and equipment to Ukraine on an ongoing basis. But clearly, uh, a very concerted diplomatic effort is necessary here, and we're starting to see the shape of this. What about uh, Fiona energy sanctions in particular, which CNN is reporting are seen as a last resort within the Biden administration because of the potential impact on the global economy. Uh, do you think it will come down to that? Well, look, this is something that's been discussed before on many occasions. I mean, there's obviously the question about the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that flows directly from Russia to Germany, and the United States has put a lot of pressure uh, on to stop the, the development of that pipeline, and, of course, it's in its very last phases now. But absolutely, the larger implications of going after the Russian energy sector uh, at a time where we're having problems in uh, the energy space uh, altogether because of uh, supplies and distribution and the way that we've been trying to ramp the economy back up again after COVID. You know, we've seen massive shocks around the globe.
from other interruptions of supply, thinking back to the 1970s and the Yom Kippur War aftermath, for example. And there was discussions about uh, doing something similar during the standoff in Venezuela a couple of years ago when Russia intervened there as well to prop up uh, Nicolas Maduro in the, in the midst of an international effort. And people pulled back from that because of the ramifications, because this would have international reverberations. So I think that this is something that we would have to approach with caution and, again, collectively. There has to be support from Europeans and others for uh, more drastic action in sanctions. It's no good if the United States just does this alone. As we all know, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, prides himself on maneuvering and manipulating situations uh, in terms of next steps, though. What should we be looking for, Fiona, uh, for an indication of where this is all heading? Well, we're already seeing it. You yourself mentioned at the, the top of this, uh, Wolf, the way that the, uh, there are reports now that the Russians have increased the number of troops. I mean, Putin intends to keep the pressure on. Uh, this is um, his way of gunboat diplomacy, getting us all to the table to talk about the things that he's concerned about. Vladimir Putin wants his security dilemmas addressed. This isn't just an issue of our security, Ukraine's security or Europe's security. He's trying to kind of force uh, a whole set of discussions that he wanted right from the very beginning of his presidency. You said, you know, we're talking today on the 30th anniversary of the dissolution of the Soviet Union. For Putin and for Russia, this marked an enormous loss the loss of a state, the second time in the 20th century after the Russian Revolution, they want to have a post-Cold War settlement. Ukraine is part of that. But really what Putin wants to do is thrash out Russia's place in Europe. So he's going to keep the pressure on himself. He wants to get us towards a negotiating table. And we're going to have to figure out, along with our European allies, about how we manage this. Fiona Hill, thanks so much for joining us and thanks for all your service. Appreciate it very much. Thanks, Wolf. The CEO